Hi, welcome back to the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. I'm Mr. Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you an advanced yet easy way to mask clouds, fire, and other semi-transparent objects in Photoshop. Before we get started, I would like to ask you to help out PTC by simply clicking on the like button if you see a technique that you enjoy and that will help you in your creative projects. Okay, let's get started. This is the document that we're going to work with and it contains three layers. We have the background layer, a jet layer, and a cloud layer. Before we get started, I'm going to show you what you normally would do in case you had an isolated object. If I wanted to place this cloud here on this image, I would simply change the blending mode. I want to keep the cloud and I want to remove everything that's in the background. The cloud is white, the background is black, so I can use the screen blending mode, which removes the black and keeps the white and we have our cloud. So that's very simple. But with a more difficult image like this background, how do we make it seem as if the jet is going through the clouds? Now, I'm not gonna worry about the scale of the jet. I know that in real life, the jet will be much, much smaller than that. But for this tutorial, it sort of helps if we have a big jet. So if we wanted to make it seem as if the jet was pushing through those clouds, how will we do that? We can of course do several masking techniques, but in this tutorial we're going to focus on using the blend if option. If you're not familiar with blend if, I have a tutorial that covers everything about it. I'll place a link right below in the description if you want to find out more on how to use it. But just to give you a quick explanation on how it works, I'm going to double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. From here, under blend if, you have these sliders that you can use to hide or reveal pixels based on the luminosity. If I create a black and white adjustment layer, you will see that the image has luminance values. There's highlights, midtones, and shadows. And we can use those values to either show or hide pixels. If I bring up the blend if slider once again, you can see that I have the white point slider under the this layer, meaning the layer that is currently selected. And I can click and drag to the left and notice how those pixels start becoming transparent. All the bright pixels in the image, leaving only the dark ones. I could also click and drag this slider to the right. You'll notice how the dark pixels start disappearing, leaving only the bright ones. So this is a technique that we're going to use in this tutorial. So with the background selected, I'm going to press Control J on Windows, that's Command J on the Mac, to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to drag that above the jet layer. And I'm also going to enable the jet layer. So you can see, there's the jet. What I'm going to do now is simply double click to the side of the layer and bring up the blend if options. And I'll do the same thing. I'll hide everything in this layer, not the underlying layers, nothing below it, just the layer that we have currently selected and click and drag on the black point slider and move it to the right to hide the dark pixels. You're going to notice the jet come through and to have smoother transitions and make it seem more like clouds, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click and spread those apart to create a smoother transition between the visible and invisible pixels. Then I'll press OK. I can click and drag on the jet and now the jet looks like it's behind the clouds of the image. If I disable the background layer, you will see that this layer only contains the clouds and when you bring the background back, it all looks seamless. So that is the theory behind this technique. In the next example, I'm going to take it to the next level and show you how you can use groups and layer masks to make this technique even more useful. In this image, we have two layers. We have this background image and this foreground element. And what we want to do is make it seem as if the samurai is standing on this fire. And we're going to use the same technique. I'm going to click on the background layer and press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate. I'll drag the layer to the top and I'll double click to the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window. And under Blend If, I'm going to hide everything that is dark and keep the bright pixels. So I'm going to keep the flames. Right about here, I'm going to hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, to split that point in half and create a smooth transition in between the visible and invisible pixels. Then I'm going to press OK. 
and that looks pretty good but you'll notice that there is one problem there's some bright areas that are appearing in front of the samurai's face and obviously that doesn't look very good so how do we fix that problem really easy all we need to do is hold alt on windows option on the mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything in the layer now with the brush tool selected we can paint with white to reveal the pixels on this layer so i'm going to hold alt option on the mac right click and drag to the right to make my brush larger and drag up and down to change the hardness so i want a fairly soft brush right around here and then i can start painting in the flames so now i can selectively paint where the flames are going to affect the samurai see that see how cool that looks if you're liking this technique don't forget to click on that like button and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. But anyway, this looks much better and we no longer see the white pixels on his face or any other part of his body. I can even take this one extra step further. I can hide his right foot behind the flames. If I hold shift and click on the background, I select both layers. Then I can press Control G, Command G in the Mac, put those into a group. I can call the group Samurai. And I'll click on the layer mask icon to add a layer mask. The layer mask is completely white, which means that it reveals the entire contents of the group. But if I change my foreground color to black and I paint, I hide pixels so I can hide this foot so that this foot is completely consumed by the flame. And using these two layer masks allow me to create a much more realistic effect. Now, we can take this even a step further by using a really cool blending mode technique. This is a blending mode technique that I showed several years ago, and I'm not sure if I was the first person on YouTube to share it, but I have definitely seen a lot of people showing it now. So I'll show it again. And that is this technique here. I'm going to create a layer and I'm going to press Control Alt G to clip it to the layer below. That means that anything that we place on this layer will only affect the layer below. Then I'm going to select a bright yellow color like this one and you know what maybe I'll make it even brighter like that bright then with the brush tool I'm going to make the brush smaller and make it softer and I'll paint right here in these areas where the fire is hitting his body like so then I can double click to the side of the layer and change the blending mode to color dodge and if I click on the transparency shapes checkbox notice how the blend changes see that see how it looks hotter it looks more like fire now so this is the technique that I was talking about that I showed maybe about two three years ago and I've been seeing it a lot lately so here it is again but anyway with this blending mode you can also change the opacity but don't use the opacity use the fill opacity which will give you a different result see that See how it seems like it's not as hot anymore and the more you drag to the right, the hotter it gets. Look at the difference with the regular opacity, not the same. So there's eight blending modes in Photoshop that give you different results when you change opacity or fill. If you wanna see my tutorial that explains all the blending modes, I'll place a link right below in the description. That video will teach you everything you wanna know about blending modes. I highly recommend it, so check it out. But anyway, you can just use the fill opacity to just reduce the intensity of the brightness of the heat on his pants and that looks much much more realistic i'll press ok and i'll add one last piece to this composite so that it looks more realistic and we'll use a technique that we learned on a recent tutorial i'll select my smoke brush i'm just going to use the same color as the smoke that you see here so if you hold alt option on the mac you get the eyedropper tool and you can just click to select whatever color that you like so i selected the same color of the smoke i can just simply start painting smoke so i'll just make my brush larger and i can get mo more smoke in here and if you want to know how to create this brush of course i have a tutorial right below in the description where i show you how to make a photoshop brush from any photo but anyway that is the smoke, and if that's too much, I'll even reduce the opacity even further just to barely get a hint of smoke. And it sort of helps bring the entire composite together. Remember, if this is your first time at the Photoshop Training Channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in the next tutorial.